Welcome, welcome back to the part two. That's right, the part two of our post US election, the market outlook for the winning strategies in the winning sectors. That's right, of course, with uh, Roby help, we are able to uh, push on looking at the market. Now, how are, how are you all uh, looking into the market now? All right, right now, if you look at what has been in the KLCI, we are really been sort of uh, 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 control from the long arm uh, by the US because uh, there's a few things I will talk about in here where the Dow Jones doesn't do move that much and we also impacted right today the last uh, closing that we have our market is still hanging on around the 1492 we couldn't go up despite we have good reports by two big companies which I will talk about it too all right so let's let's go on and look at what we have in store for you all right all right, for start, we are doing our one day uh, foundation, sorry, our one day course, okay? Our one day course, which is coming up on the uh, 31st of uh, October. So that's the one that uh, you should take note of it, which is actually this Saturday, which is three days only. Okay, and on top of that, this is our Telegram chat room. We have not done so. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be updated. All our archive, including tonight, are updated in there. So you never miss any of our session in here. Also, uh, we are currently doing part of our services uh, together with Nottingham and also Monash University to train some of their students to really look in the stock market, especially dealing with the investment club. Uh, so really want to teach them how does the market work. So if you have uh, your children in Monash and also University in Nottingham and you want to learn about our program that we have, it's a three series of talk about what is stock market series right and using smart roby do contact us okay so the number is below say hey I, I like my son to participate in the university stock market series introduction to the stock market do let us know and we will give you the link so you can join it it will be on tuesday night for the we already had one session uh last night so we're doing two more session on the you uh, on the stock market that will get them started it's more tailored for the uh, college for that matter so if you have student uh, or your children want to learn that do let us know okay so this is what we have and also don't forget our latest show that we have for you will be the uh, new trading with smart roby beginning 9 of november uh, uh, every monday and wednesday we're doing this new show new format to really look at using smart roby to look at the, some of the shares that you have okay mm. Uh, there's a question here. Will KLC stock keep dropping to the US action? Will bounce back or keep going up the line? I will answer your question after the end of this presentation. Okay. So right now, this is where we are in the KLC and this is on the star paper, which I'll talk about today. The regional price to earning ratio. Right now, we can see the KLCI uh, where we are. Let me just switch this on. Right. The KLCI right now, we are at uh, 22 times PE. Okay, now how do you use this? One of the ways you use this actually, if you look at the smart robbery, we have the sector average under the fundamentals. If you look at the sector average, uh, even for technology is 45 times. So those are referring to technology. But when we start to compare to country, then you will know where we are. We are 22 times. So as I said before today, when foreign funds come in and they are coming in there, and in my opinion, lately they've been coming in for the last week, which I'm going to show you the chart, because they do find Malaysia quite attractive. Now the market, like it or not, I don't think to answer the question of reason whether the market is going to drop, we will have to look at the foreign fund flow. The foreign fund flow are reducing less. They are actually coming in to buy. No doubt today we felt five points, but this is where we are when we compare regionally how expensive we are. Now, why this is important? Now, when foreign fund come in, they're going to look at which, which is the cheapest one and which is the most expensive one. So of course, the most expensive one is Japan. Lah. Right, if they want to follow, and these are what we call merging market. China, okay, depending whether they are Trump supporter or not. So 17 times. So in terms of regional, we are not the cheapest. Indonesia is the cheapest. But when you talk about the rubber glove opportunity from the pandemic, that's the one they want to be investing because they do see going forward, uh, uh, there is a potential for the rubber glove to do further well. But that's not going to happen now. That's going to happen next year. So which means you need to look at uh, what we call a, a trade setup that will suit you, which I'll talk about the trade setup later on. Uh, what that will suit you, we can use uh, uh, things, uh, sign of strengths like like NS, like spring to really get ourselves entered here. Okay. So we we seen this this morning in here two. 
company, the uh, rubber glove. Okay, and now uh, we have the Hata Lega and Super Super Duper Super Max who came in and started to report their earnings. And the report of the earnings has been very, very good, as you can see. Yeah, and like it or not, we are seeing uh, what we call profit taking. Right today, the market closed five uh, uh, five points. And do you know why? Right, usually because on good news they will take profit so do take note of this kind of things okay and we are coming to end of october i already said before october month time frame is bullish so we had, did have the market move up but at the, at the last last three or four days the market uh, came back off because of the covid 19 cases continue to uh, becoming be, uh, greater in the united states and also the stimulus has been sort of uh, talk has been turned off. I think some of you have been following that news. Uh, they started to talk and then they say no talk. But I will talk, give you a bit more clarification to that. Okay, so this was uh, where we are right now. So if you can see here, let me just get my uh, pen here and draw you something. So you can see we do have a good support at this level here, right? We have two spring. So that tells you we have some sort of support in here. But we also have to take notice that what we are seeing right now, okay, what we are seeing right now, okay, we have the market today down 5 points, 1495. We are still holding on. We need to break up 1520. I think at one point in time we have, but don't forget, in Malaysia, we still have the budget 2020, which is November 6. So there is a lot of uncertainty, but right at this spot, the market does have support in here. And coupled with the foreign funds, which I will talk about it, you will have. But generally, when I see it on good news, a market trending lower, right? But it hasn't broke yet. And how do we know that? What do you see there? Is it orange pentagon? Is it orange trend zone? Or is it bluish trend zone? Now, I think many times people just don't want to uh, ignore the facts. They just look at the price and they don't know. Always look at the trend zone. That's why you need to look at the trend zone. The trend zone now is blue. At any point in time when it starts to turn yellow, that's the time you want to be bearish, okay? You want to be yellow. Well, right now it's bluish. Like the market is still moving sideways. The bear may be in town, but one point that is pointing it slightly higher is the foreign funds coming in. What's really pushing it down, as I said before, it's always been the uh, economic uncertainty and the COVID cases. COVID cases, Malaysia has reached 801 uh, as of today. All right, so some of you will know. But right now we do have this support here, okay? Okay, now my next slide is going to talk about the Dow Jones. Now, Dow Jones took another tumble in here because the lockdown it, trade is back. So this basically is saying that, look, uh, they couldn't reach an agreement in here and they're just going to wait it until after the election, which is next week. So that's why we're seeing Dow. Even tonight, you will see a Dow uh, falling further because they could not reach an agreement. Now, remember, market does not like uh, does not like uncertainty. So right now, we can see, let me just get down to my laser pointer here. Okay, you can see the uh, red pentagon already appeared on the S&P 500 here. So once you have those uh, things, okay, once you have this red pentagon in here, that tells you the trend is going to turn and it's likely to head down lower. So we have to take uh, note of that. But at the same time, we do have some sort of uh, 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 analysis, analysis that simply says right now, a lot of the result that is coming up from tech firm, technology are doing well. So in the post-COVID normal, right, there is a switch. Technology stock is seen as defensive shares. Now keep in mind. So that tells you a lot of people are going into buying technology because they are producing uh, revenues, they are producing earnings. And because of the work from home, a lot of distancing is happening. So those products are doing well. So technology stocks are doing well. Do you, do you agree to this not? Because I also find this this is a new uh, norm that we are seeing in here. And this uh, seems to be persisting going forward as a defensive shares. All right. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So we also want to look at the KLCI. Uh, having said that, okay. Here, what are the hot stock? Now, last week, we have seen healthcare were doing so much better in here. But this week, healthcare seems to be coming down. And uh, I think this week, we did have one bar up. 
by a lot of due to the earnings but subsequently we have to see tomorrow whether there is continued uh, profit taking if the continued profit taking comes out then you'll see healthcare come coming down but the technology stock is continuing to go up in here just like what i just say in us technology stock in the post covid norm means going forward it seems as defensive because the earnings are growing so a lot of people are moving technology and that trend seems to be participating to our market that simply tell you technology are doing so much better in here now other sectors that is coming are utility industrial product take note the utilities are like uh, tenaga okay uh we may have uh, uh actually it's only one or two uh, utilities that we have so tenaga may be coming back with this uh, uh movement in here but then you have to be careful right always look at the individual charts for that one so always use the klc uh, sector the KLC sector screener that we have on our uh, trade BSA package so you can see it much better over there and the others as you can see here finance consumer and energy do award it for the time being now this is what earlier I was talking about the foreign funds flow so traditionally we, you have said before you do see a lot of foreign fund like minus 150 million this red bar that you see here all right the red bar that you see those are the one actually leaving the country okay and the green one now what can you see between the green and the red can someone tell me that okay thank you for highlighting ken uh um uh, thursday is a public holiday usually public holiday we do see a bit of sell off which is not a big problem but what's more important is what you see right at the screen in on top of you you can see we do have foreign funds coming in these are the green uh, uh, column bars and they are increasing we have two in a row okay of course after two in a row then you will see some sell off in here but what that's telling you you can see this little hook here we do have a resist uh, a triple bottom support you can see a uh, triple about one two three that's about 1480 so the market is really wrinkling in that in, in now do you sell your investment what do you think do you all want to sell your investment leaving more or entering actually nicholas if you look at the green column it is entering right now so what do you think do you want to exit right now at the support or do you want to wait on but if you're most investor like i know you you will never cut loss no matter what i say just like the covid right <laughs> so that is why if you cannot cut loss it's important that you stick to some fundamental stocks that you would hold on going into the uh, post election but there are also some investors like to buy uh, a trend that is falling because they're trying to buy cheap and to me that is not advisable because to you need to have a good strategy going forward and that strategy comes with and also you need to go back and measure your own performance if you don't measure your own performance you do not know how well you're doing then what's the whole point you know you just you know playing the stock market just to pass time i think that's more than that like this year i think so far i'm running pretty well some of my portfolio that i managed for my client about 25 to 30 percent up okay so i'm pretty happy this year so far so i would like to have november and december to end well then that will be a good year for everybody who follow our method there all right so this is important foreign ones are coming back and i think there is a support and hopefully uh you know we have this 1500 hooking up and that's a month so foreign funds coming support is positive okay now let's look at the us dow jones so right now as i said before the uh we have the red pentagon okay so you've seen the red pentagon in here market started to fall uh, to twenty seven thousand five hundred level here okay and uh, early on we could we were expecting the market to break higher because they wanted to uh approve the us covid stimulus package for the COVID-19 right and then uh, the big boss came and said okay no deals because the Republican until the Republican win the US election because the boss says so and Steve Mnuchin you know who Steve Mnuchin, Mnuchin right uh, Treasury Secretary right that is this big boss is Donald Trump do you think Donald Trump is going to come back what do you think if you think Donald Trump is going to come back just like Donald Trump if not no Donald Trump all right and give me a thumbs up I want to make sure you guys are are, are not sleepy we, you know our team myself really put out this good presentation in here right. inflow is more frequent that's right all right thank you okay let's move on so Steve Mnuchin is coming back in here and let's look at the analysis okay of what we have 
for the Biden and Trump, the part two. Okay, so we're going to go more in depth right now. Of course, we really want to look back in the 2016 uh, you know, results and what we have. So this is a calendar of event where we are. We are right at this spot here, which is the 28th of October. So uh, 3rd of November, it's next next Wednesday. So it's going to be a very crucial. Of course, the result will be out. I'm going to sort of play it around. So we are right here on 3rd of November. I'm going to bring you through all the way to 3rd of November. So continue to follow me on Martin TFO and do share this in your video, uh, in your timeline, so they will benefit. Okay, let's go into... Let's go into okay the 2016 uh, results uh, that we have so far here, right? So you can see in uh, 2016 we uh, we knew that uh, uh, he, uh, Hillary Clinton lost. He lost by 233 seats versus Donald Trump 306. Of course, Donald Trump 306. How did he win it? Right, and these are all the states. Now remember, last week if you did come, now how many of you came to last week? <laughs> How many of you came last week and watched part one? If you came last week and watched part one, just type part one. So at least I know you, you, all, you all came last week to watch part one. Now we have this, what we call the electro map. Uh, uh, electoral college map that's basically tell you the number of seats that, that they have and how they allocate is based on the Senate and also based on the populations and bit. But really in, in the you can see the rural area in short are really dominated uh, by the uh, re, uh, Republican which is the red in here. So this is how it pans out and if you look back very deeply analyzing back in 2016 from the Democrat okay you have Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton won because she was the most uh, technical and most persuasive but she was very unpopular among the Democrat as a result the turnout for the 2016 by uh, a lot of Democrats, right, was very poor. It was less than 50%. But this year, right now, we have about almost 65 million already voted and the turnout is going to be more than 55%. So more than 55%, less than 50% 2006. Same thing like what we have in Malaysia in our general election uh, uh, 14, right? A lot of my friends from overseas, America, uh, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Australia, all fly back to Malaysia. So that's why the turnout was good. Usually uh, incumbents will win if the turnout was low. So in this case, you can see uh, the re uh, in 2016, uh, Hillary Clinton really had a very low turnout and he lost all the important states like Pennsylvania and also uh, uh, Wisconsin, okay, which is the 10 lateral seat in here. The Michigan was 16 seat, so they, they totally lost. Okay, now also take note of what's the difference between these American states. We're going to look at the economy that is generated, okay? So having said that, like we said before, just like in Sabah, a lot of rural areas tend to be poor. So you can see, in terms of really contributing, you can see uh, California contribute 14.6% to the GDP growth, okay? Then you have Texas, of course, like California is Silicon Valley, the Hollywood all produced there, right? Then you have Texas 8.8, of course, oil and gas. This is where uh, it is a Texas set. You can see here, 38 is uh, a number of seats, 38. Then Ohio is also uh, industrial, so Pennsylvania 3.8, but New York, okay? Wall Street, yeah? Remember Wall Street, a little bit of tourism inside there. Also, they also contributed 8% of it. Florida is 5% in here. So if you look at him, the number of population state that has the biggest are rural area and they don't really contribute to it. The one that really contribute are just a couple of states. Texas, California, New York, and uh, next one is Florida. Florida use is a Republican state. Okay, now we're going to talk about the battle state soon. Okay, so this is just to keep in mind who are the richest state inside here. So this is a picture of uh, Mount Rushmore in uh, South Dakota. So, you know, at one point in time, Donald Trump wanted to put his face on next to Abraham Lincoln, right? This is uh, uh, George Washington. I can't remember the other two guys inside here. This is Abraham. Maybe someone can tell me the two middle guy. Uh, uh, George Washington, Thomas Je Jefferson, that's right. Uh, the third guy, I can't recognize him. The fourth one is Abraham Lincoln. These are the, I would say, the four founding or more famous uh, uh, president that we have so Donald Trump was interested to put their face over there all right Trump will win again <laughs> okay good one low all right let's take a look and see what we are looking at okay so let's look at the current situation right now okay these are what we call the battles the battleground state the battleground state is can go both ways so if you look right now in terms of polling 
Democrat have 278. Now, to win, you need 270. Okay, 270. Now, in 2016, uh, Hillary Clinton lost because of Wisconsin. They lost Michigan and they lost Pennsylvania because those usually has been the blue state. Okay, has been blue state, but they lost it because she didn't go bother to go over to take care of them and vote. So right now, you can see uh, 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 on tonight, you know, uh, 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 Democrats, President, incumbent coming okay is going to all these states trying to gather votes in there and donald trump is coming very very close the the gap used to be big man the last few rounds he's been coming in it's either do or die and it's getting the closer so it's going to be a very very tight uh, uh race going to 3rd of november which we will know on the 4th of november around uh, i think nine o'clock at night that is going to go all the way to afternoon it's going to be very exciting like world cup football for the whole day so in here let's look at what we call the battleground state the battleground state are those that is in uh, uh, so-called uh, brown color here so the brown color we have a georgia 16 uh, florida 29 nc is uh, not caroline okay but previously this was one over here so if you look at this uh ohio have 18 seats okay if they lose ohio and if they lose florida donald trump is gone that's it because if you add in uh, uh, uh ohio 18 uh, and you got florida so these are the seat that is pretty much secured currently on Democrat is 278 seats. So if you have Ohio and NC, Georgia and uh, Florida turn blue, the show is over for Donald Trump. Okay, so Donald Trump is important now to turn this into him. Even at this point, he turned it all in his favor, right? The blue state. President Biden will still win. So this is why he's going to come in and contest. That is going to be a contest, and uh, with the newly, uh, newly, uh, just uh, what kind of Supreme uh, Court Justice, uh, uh, this uh, Amy Garrett, there will be a contest, and if there is a contest, which I talk about in part one, remember part one I talk about the contest, then this is going to drag on, just like our market currently, right? Our KLCA market, we have this uh, Perikatan not getting the support Prime Minister. That's what we have our market not going anywhere. So this is going to be the same thing for U.S. So they're waiting for the Agong to come in. There's no Agong in the United States, okay? So like Malaysia, the Agong said, okay, everybody, please, uh, all the MP support that the budget will be coming on the 6th. So that's why you see our Malaysian market go up 3 point, come down 3 point, go up 3 point, come down 4 point. One. The next few days will be like that. In U.S., if they go to this contest, you will see world global uncertainty so let me tell you first okay so that means on from 4th of november which is will last about a week if they're going to have a contest let's go but on the flip side if the blue state wins and president biden wins by a huge margin at least 290 or 300 seats then the market will rally because then you get a lot of certainty the covid 19 stimulus will be uh, so-called approved everybody gets some money and you know the world move again and those sectors i'm going to talk about it so keep this in mind so i'm just going to give you a link here uh the next one and now this is another prediction using uh electionbetting.com okay on electionbetting.com do you know in us you can actually bet almost everything uh, football weather you know uh, baseball also election so here you can see uh, the redder they are means this is going to be a republican the more dark blue right the one going to belongs to republican so you can see again right florida and if you look at this florida and north carolina florida and north carolina and a little bit of georgia is going to be the uh, uh, swing state you can swing either both sides so that's why you can see uh, right now tonight you can see uh, joe biden are really going over to the uh, uh, uh florida to try to get more votes inside there okay okay let's move on in here so again there's another 360 website also doing our own what we call uh, artificial intelligence counting and so forth and again they did predict 88 percent biden will win just on based on what we saw over here right this earlier first page right 278 those are pretty safe but biden campaign managers also said that look we are still you know tailing uh, from behind in here because they don't want to get caught like what they did in 2016 and lost to uh, donald trump and but personally my my belief if there is no covid 19 donald trump will win this election so that is why you notice the biden kamala uh, harris 
are taking the COVID-19 and really driving it through, driving it through. Because that shows a lot of the weaknesses and bad administration by the Trump, uh, by the Trump management. I think many of you, may... how to bet? No Donkey Kong. Huh? <laughs> no Donkey Kong, please. Yes, also I don't want to have Donkey Kong. How to bet? Uh, there are some websites you can bet, but uh, I have not checked them. The problem is how to send the money over and how are you going to collect it? Okay, maybe there are some uh, bookie in Malaysia, those uh, online, you have to check it out. Okay, so if you look at the battleground state, how they are going to, you can see, uh, this is where the blue, right? To, in order to have 270, 270 is like Malaysia, uh, Malaysia is, uh, we have uh, 122, because we have 222 seats, right? So 103 is a winner, I can't remember, 103 or 105, then uh, Perikatan will win. So this is the same thing, they're having about 270 seats here. So right now they are in the pocket. So once, if they take uh, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin and Nevada, they already secured the 270 seats today, okay? So Ohio and Texas, if they lose, uh, even in here, Florida is still considered, huh? Uh, a, a state belonging to Biden based on the current poll. But remember, all polling has margin of error and they are wrong. Do not rely on polling. More important, I'm going to show you the next slide here, is to look at this. Now, this is a website on uh, CNN. Just go to Electro College Interactive Map, all right? And uh, type this out. And you can see, these are all the Biden, uh, so-called the Biden and the Trump state, uh, the blue and the red state. But the battleground state, about 85, you can see here, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Ohio. So why this is important? What's going to happen on the post-election night or day in Malaysia on the 4th? You will get early results coming out. So Arizona, 11 seats. Florida, 29 seats. North Carolina, 25 seats. Now this has been all the while belonging to Donald Trump. So if Donald Trump comes in, he has about 250. Yeah? You need 270. Yeah? All right, he can go and catch out, say, hey, I'm the president, so go and declare shock, shock, oh. shock, scenario, you know. So these are 65, but because of the mailing ballot, a lot of people mail out, right? Remember this year, uh, a lot of people, uh, due to COVID-19, they could not come, so they just sort of mail it to them, uh, and those will take weeks to open. So you can see during November 3rd, 4th, 5th, there is still a lot of answer, depending on how much is the gap. If there's a big gap, Whack it 270, 290 in here, then sapu everything. Because last time, 2016, CNN poll, a lot of the very popular poll, Reuters poll, all got it wrong and they thought Clinton would win by a huge margin and they're not. So point number two, if Donald Trump is leading on the early polls, which means on 4th of November, around 10 o'clock in the morning, you see Arizona falling to, uh, to the red state, right? Then it's going to be blue state will have to catch up. So the blue state will, will be Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, and Minkos. Now, if you remember the Sabah election, it was the very same thing. And that night when the Sabah election was coming out, right, first took the lead was uh, actually uh, Varisan Plus, right? Varisan Plus, when they hit 18 and 20, then all of a sudden, uh, what happened? Right? Gabongan, uh, Gabongan Sabah, Sab uh, sorry, Gabongan uh, Riot Sabah, uh, GBS, uh, just came out and overtake, and then win already. So it's something like that, no? It's so red state will, will move up, right? Then suddenly when the blue state comes, huh, will overtake. Because why? They have to coyote the ballot, they have to count. And there is a lot of uh, people uh, doing uh, mailing ball mailing the, the ballot, millions and millions of envelopes in there. So take note of this too. There. I, I, know, I know I spent a bit of time there, but I just want to get it right. So because on 3rd of November, this is likely to happen. So give you some background over there. Oh, Malaysia is 112. Now, quick one, very fast one. Huh? Democrat better or Republican better? This was shown last week. Bottom line is, Democrat will do so much better in terms of uh, numbers of years that they hold, 22 years, jobs they created, 42 million. So I'm going to show you a snapshot of Trump versus uh, Obama time, okay? Let's move on to the next one in here. And US Roby will be available for first quarter 2021. So one of the things we really want to do is to really prep you guys and train you up. When that trend comes, Right? Should Malaysia go into a tailspin because we couldn't get the, or we're going to go to a general election? I think likely we may have a general election uh, next year, March. Just listen to some of my talks that I've done before uh, on the uh, part one and part two uh, of the tumbling of the house of cards. Okay, So when we have that, then you can actually focus on the US market. I'm not sort of recommending you go to the US market, but I'm just giving you another alternative, right, where to look at. Now, if you look in terms of S&P 500, uh, you will see that Democrats, uh, which is the blue state, is leading ahead, 
Okay, so 45.9% with Democrat versus... Uh, so a lot of people will tell you if Donald Trump uh, becomes, uh, you know, uh, president again, the stock market will go up. Not really. On, on paper, that's what we do. Fact-checking. Uh, Fact-checking in here. And we know Democrats are all been ahead. Now, uh, let's look at the crunch time. Now, two weeks leading into the presidential election, it has 2016 has always been volatile, okay, with the few exceptions. So, this year is the same thing. Now, we got one more week, remember? This week, the Dow Jones fell by 600 point, 200 point, and I think right now I haven't checked it in yet. But I do think if you check it, I would not be surprised it's down some more. Okay. So the point I want to make is that are you a short-term trader investor? Because for myself, I have a lot of money as well as my client money in the U.S. market. So it's also important, and I and I do think that there are a lot of opportunity inside. So if if you are longer term, stay with the trend. I do think that the likelihood whoever wins. Market will go higher. It's just that now we are getting the market volatility that we've seen. If somebody say this makes sense, if you say it makes sense, give me another thumbs up. Thank you, thank you, Hafei. So whole point is try to explain a very good opportunity in US that's happening right now in Malaysia. Okay, uh, going forward, this is another statistic I think I showed last week before telling it whoever wins going forward uh, after one week or they say one week during that one week which means November third onwards uh, to November seven uh, Huru hara one. Ah, huru hara. The market will drop or maybe one point. Then after that, one month later or so, uh, it will still be down. But year end to December, you see that rally. And then six months la later, uh, after that, everybody adjusted. The market adjusted the year. The market will jalan the year. Okay? So this is the, the prognosis we see back 1936 in 2000. Of course, there will be uh, some. So whoever wins, keep in mind, the longer term, that's not going back to your, your time frame. Are you long term or short? You are going to make it in US markets, okay? So, like it or not, based on the statistic we've shown in here, it does look like Trump is likely to win, all right? On the stock market statistics, but based on the uh, number electoral seat and the polling, you've seen Biden is leading away. Just want to show you the, the facts inside. Now, if you look at the uh, growth of a dollar invested in S&P 500 to 2002, you can see the market continue to go up. So, no worries, right? Siapa menang? Pun boleh naik juga, okay? No market crash, don't worry. So, there's a lot of say talking about Republican runs the US economy better than the Democrats, okay? Whether this is true or not. Especially, there's a lot of talk that you see uh, on TV when you listen Donald Trump say this and say that. But you look at number of jobs that is created, right? Over this time, Obama during the first term, because there was a market crash, there were not much jobs. But you look at the second term that he did, he came back, uh, he created about 8,000 manufacturing jobs. Uh, they, uh, they created 17,000 jobs. So overall, we look at it, it's just slightly up. Uh, uh, hourly wages actually gone uh, uh, up under uh, Trump. And the GDP growth, Trump was just slightly up. Uh, S&P 5.1%. And uh, national debt 72. National debt 79. So you like it or not, there's no very, really difference between them. But if you measure in terms of the stock market, okay, in terms of the economy that is building by Trump, continue to, you know, uh, self-boast himself, you got to know what is uh, Trump is talking about. Let's, let's check the fact. Now, the U.S. economy growth, uh, pretty much steady. It's the same, Obama day and Trump day. So, one person said, whoever wins. But the COVID-19, right, was the one that causes it as well. That's why Trump said, you know, it's not his fault. All right. Okay, let's move on. And if you look at the stock market, as I said before, the he always said like the Wall Street loved me for what I did for them, right? You can see, uh, Obama is okay, except for the market crash and the COVID crash. So what I'm trying to say is like this. If there's going to be a crash, it's not caused by the president. It's caused by natural causes of market dynamics. If it's going to crash, it's going to crash, just like COVID. But the point is, you need to be in the right sector. So that's why tonight I want to share you those sector. Okay. Do you like what you see so far? Okay. If you like what you see so far, give me another thumbs up. All right. Now, of course, we he always talk about Donald Trump saying, but you know, under Republican wages will be good, uh, will be uh, will be control will be lower, and under the blue state, which is Democrat, everything will be expensive. Tax will be going up, which is I will talk about next time. But if you look in terms of adjusted, and this is from BBC, yeah. Uh, Trump and, and Obama also same. Wages is going to go up. Right now, it's about almost uh, $29.47 inside here per hour. 
So you can say, wow, very rich a US and nobody, everybody want to jump ship and work that. It's a lot of tax inside here, which I want to talk about the next slide. Okay. Then in terms of the US trade deficit, huh? remember uh, before coming to this, Donald Trump and China were fighting about the trade war, isn't it? And, use, and, and he want to use that, look, you're supposed to be closer. How much I sell to you, how much you sell to me, right? Should be closer. But at the end, over so many years, uh, uh, the last three and a half years with Z, he promised to reduce the US trade deficit. But it didn't. It actually went furthermore. Close to about one trillion, huh? One trillion, and he wanted to bring back jobs. Yes, he only brought back about seventeen thousand manufacturing jobs, and those jobs is to appraise some of the voters in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Hawaii. Those are manufacturing jobs. But we all know U.S. can't do much of a manufacturing. The Silicon Valley, if you look back, that's why I show you the the GDP chart. Where is the money flow? New York, Wall Street, California, Silicon Valley, Texas. The rest is all these pockets of manufacturing in here. Take a look back at the last chart that you see. So once you understand where the economic activity, then you know how US economy and what sector you want to be in. You know, It's just like what I'm teaching you is know where the money is. Go where the money is. Same thing, also if you look back in Malaysia, right? where are the big economic activity? Klang Valley, Johor, Penang. Sabah Sarawak, if you look at Sabah Sarawak, oil and gas only, right? Then you look at uh, East Coast Tourism. In the middle is tourism also, which we talk about Pahang things so. so along the same line too. So where you want to put your money is those economic activity around there. Go down like waterfall 1876. Uh, this morning 1906. Now gold shouldn't go down if 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 you really ask me, you know, because if there are uncertainty, gold should stay up there. But gold is going down for some other reasons which I'm not looking at it. But my bet is that equity will do well and people take money out from gold and they're betting on the stock market in India. Thanks for your fact, Jennifer. Okay. Do I say it makes sense? Huh? Okay, if I make sense today, uh, just give me another thumbs up. Okay, let's look at the biggest risk. Uh, last week, I talked about the fund manager, uh, the group of fund managers that Barron's do interview. And they were, the biggest concern they all have is not so much the US election. Just like what I'm trying to say tonight, the biggest, elect, the biggest concern you have is not the election. Who wins or who loses? I think by now you all know that is not really a big problem. It's the big problem is whether there is a Donkey Kong or the coronavirus. The coronavirus is the biggest problem in here, right? So if the coronavirus cannot be contained, then you'll see a lot of the economics going to be taking a, a hit here, all right? So let's talk about uh, uh, Biden tax inside. So of course, Biden going forward, he said that he's going to tax a lot of rich fellas like Donald Trump. That's why Donald Trump and all his Republican friends don't like it. You know, those in the uh, so-called taxes and they're paying less tax in, in, in Florida too, all right? So, if you look at it, they're going to raise a lot of tax, which on my next slide, from corporate tax from 21 to 28. Now, some people say that, look, corporate tax is going to be raised. That will have a mean, uh, determinant um, earnings on it. But historically has shown, okay, and this was from BBC too, uh, raising income tax will not have an impact on the stock market, okay? It's the perception. It's the perception in here, okay? Yes, very strong up. Uh, Dow Jones and S&P down, that's right. Okay. So this is why uh, we, we really need to look at the uh, the facts before really going in. You know, a lot of time we hear and hear this, right? Uh, when I first start looking at US, people tell me, you know, Republican is good. But after I fact, fact check, it's not. And the same thing too. When you buy a certain share, you need to fact check all those, all right? If you're just going to be listening list here, it's very difficult to make money. And uh, what I want to be is a resource to you to share those information that you will benefit in here. All right, let's move on to, to the next one. Now, if you look at here, some of the new tax that were proposed by uh, Joe Biden, this is from Vogue, is capital gain, right? As a normal income, they're going to raise corporate tax. Uh, they're going to step up uh, some more tax, 15% minimum uh, corporate tax, foreign, uh, foreign profit tax, they will cap the deduction because of wealthy people uh, like Donald Trump. Uh, they have a lot of deductions. If earlier on, you can see, uh, uh, even there is a subsidy uh, for oil and gas. That's right. You know, the Texas people, they all have subsidy one, right? Um, because they said, uh, sometimes I don't know why oil and gas got the subsidy one. Uh. I thought it's the EV, they have subsidy, right? And uh, they want to crack down on tax haven here. All right. So this is something now. Now, okay, straight to it, okay? What are the winning sectors for Joe Biden? So you can take a picture of this one in here. Definitely renewable energy. In the presidential debate, uh, I think last week he talked about, you know, uh, 
the oil and gas will be phased out. That's why in Pennsylvania, Ohio, which is the, used to be the and Texas, uh, these are what we call uh, the uh, oil and gas state where they earn a lot of money in there and they may vote against uh, Biden for that one. So renewable energy is because uh, Donald Trump is a big believer in climate change. You have seen in California so much fire that is burning, right? Renewable energy, wind, solar and hydro. So in that way, this kind of thing like solar west, uh, SL West, uh, uh, will do well. There's a couple of more solar power in here, but that's more of a trickle effect uh, uh, that is coming in here. But the trend is definitely looking at that. Then the big tech, again, work from home that you have uh, uh, Sundar Pichai, Tim Cooks, and also Mark Zuckerberg, which are leading in here. The semiconductors, no doubt, uh, uh, the 5G, which I've talked about the week before, industrial products, uh, automotive, and then the automotive are the electric vehicle. That will do pretty well. So take a look picture of this one in here. All right. So if uh, Donald Trump win the old economy, oil and gas, finance and services, automotive, the fossil will, will get another game and technology, right? The technology is, that's what I've talked about earlier. Two sectors that is common in Biden winning or Trump winning is technology, ladies and gentlemen. Technology. So because they seen technology of the post-COVID, people are staying home, they're buying lots more gadgets using the 5G, and that is going to be a new winner in here if i win all right so here is a very interesting chart i want to show you there is an opportunity right now it's a tesla chart if you look at here it's a tesla chart holding it came out with a very good quarter in here there is a market moving sideways and there's a long consolidation that's why you have green pentagon you have red pentagon because the market could not go up could not go up there wasn't any trend coming in here but right now we have a spring uh, UT, check out uh, Tesla, how is it doing tonight, okay? There is a possibility of a trade uh, if it breaks above the 465, pull back at 435. Right now, I think it's around that, uh, what is the last closing price? 420 something, okay? 420 something. If you want to buy that pullback, will be around the 435 price or the breakout in here. And you want to hold for uh, somewhere between two weeks to two months, okay? Five days, it's a bit short because uh, Tesla's won't move the kind of uh, time frame in here and profit target is about 502 in here. Now, why I really like about this because this, this is what I'm going to talk about the stage one accumulation in here where you see, let me just bring up here, right? Pencil and you have a congestion here. Okay. So you have sign of strength in here. You did have this line change, but there was a profit taking and you can see a volume is diminishing. Okay, so that's one thing good, which means the downtrend may have ended, and we have to see uh, tonight. Yeah, four wow, drop also four one one, also also drop some more. So we need to buy around four thirty five. So four one one is a big drop. Uh, uh down how what, how much is the down down now? Okay, do let me know because as I said before, I wouldn't be surprised in here. But don't worry, just wait until next week. Uh, look for position in here. Don't get panic if you need to cut loss. Do cut loss too. All right. So here we are, but this is a new, nice setup as of yesterday, okay? So going forward in here, again, we, all you can wait for the green pentagon to come in. Now, this is Amazon, okay? So you can see Amazon in here. I know Amazon is a bit expensive, but we use this as a case study to study. Work from home, uh, it is going to be a good opportunity, but right now we don't have any green pentagon. You have to wait for the green pentagon before you buy, okay? So uh, that will be entry around 3,291. Like Dow is 26843. Uh, what, what's the price there? How many percent down? Huh? Cool, down 600 points. That's right. I, I know about these things. Okay. They will just completely to sell sell the way down. Huh? Scare the hell out of you. This is the washout. <laughs> the big wash. Is this the big washout that we are seeing? And then next thing you have the market recovery. Very scary one. Huh? <laughs> so we, will we get that tomorrow? So let's look at what I have, uh, the, the balance in here, all right? So we have that. And now uh, to really take this to the next level, we are doing a master class in December and we will be including some of the US strategy in here. But I want to share, uh, so that is actually for the December intake. So for those of you who are interested for the December intake, right, uh, do uh, let us know. There's a number be below that. And uh, we're talking the US market strategy. Now, at the end of it, you need to have a way to make money in the US market. There is a boom coming. So right now, the market is bad. I think that's good too. So you can sit back, you wait for those signals, okay? Don't, don't buy a catching falling knife, right? Have a plan. And like I said before, 
what is your end game here? How do you intend to play your game? As I said before, those many of you who have come to my uh, masterclass where I know I talk about rotation between Malaysia and Singapore. You can do that with a lot of the local brokerage account, UOB for example, or you can do it with CIMB and so forth. So what is your end game here, right? The end game, of course, all of us wanted to make money, but more importantly, we don't want to miss and regret those opportunities. Do I say this makes sense or not? If I do type two, okay, so I know what you, uh, you guys are. So one of the ways we do, as I said before, in all our winning strategy, we use the Pentagon, just like I shared with you just now. Amazon right now, it's still uh, uh, yellow, means trend is still going down, but it's building up a base, not yet. We still need to wait for the red Pentagon. So we use the red Pentagon to give us a buy and sell signal, right? So you can see here, green Pentagon, uh, from a buying to a selling, that's a 35%. It's actually patent for a company. I think many of you know about it. So I just want to, you know, just, share with you in here. And uh, how do we look for those shares? This is uh, my Sifu told me, the father of volume spread analysis, because he says that 80% of the market volume is controlled. Just like right now, the market is scaring the hell out of you. That's why I want, I'm not surprised, right? This big drop is because of the stimulus where they said, again, we will talk about it. And don't from use this as a threat. If I don't get, if I don't win, no economy stimulus. That's why the market go right now. But as I said before, at the end, they will not let it die. But the people who hold a lot of position, especially those of you who are what we call uh, going on margin, that is going to be very, very scary in here. But what I'm trying to say in here, the best time to buy is accumulation. Now, if you look back at the chart that I just showed you just now, uh, the uh, Amazon as well as the Tesla, it is doing this accumulation stage. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. We haven't come to here yet. This, ladies and gentlemen, if the breakout, would it happen next week? Maybe, or would it happen next year? January, maybe, but I know it is going to be here. That's why we study the chart. We will have this wash. This is what we have on the wash. Very important tonight, the wash, some of you guys who told me, uh, down 600 points. That wash shouldn't happen with too much volume. That would detect. So once this wash is heavy, you can buy here and buy here. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, the market going higher. So this is why we use the Pentagon Guider in here. Right, so again, smart money using this opportunity to flush out the dumb money. Don't be a dumb money. Now, how many of you want to be a dumb money or want to be a smart money? If you want to be a smart money, type smart money, okay? Don't be a dumb money, just type it in there, all right? So, green pentagon indicator picks up the stock where it's likely to move higher, okay? So, this is where, uh, let me just bring up my, okay, my laser pointer here. And this is the part where, you know, we want to be ready to move up. Okay, so we do have the uh, Trade VSA uh, dashboard screen. I think I shared some of you. So tonight I want to do a bit of demo, okay, in here. So the best choice to use, we have a couple of them, but the first one we're going to use is the NS for high winning rates, huh? 60 to 80% of the winning rates. And you have uh, uh, look for the confirm no supply. So we use the NS screener. And if you, those of you who are listening for the first time, who is not familiar with me, you can take a picture of the Trade VSA tutorial and, and watch that one in here. But the low risk entry is this one here. So let me just share with you how it looks like. Okay. So this is the screener. Sorry, I got jam up here. Okay. So we're going to switch on to the uh, NASDAQ. All right. Let me just log in again. So once you subscribe to our system, you'll get the uh, the no supply screen. I'm just going to show you one one example, very simple example to look for shares. Then we're going to go on. This is the uh, the Malaysian market on no screener. So we're going to go on to Nasdaq. I'll choose Nasdaq because uh, Nasdaq has a lot of tech stocks. And we just go on to uh, now. Here is a very interesting. You can see a yellow here. So when you see this is yellow, that means the trend zone is bearish. Okay, the trend zone is bearish. When it is blue, it's bullish. So you can see here, the trend zone just turned uh, blue. So right now, it just tells you, look, it's a trend zone orange. You don't need to trade if you want to. Just wait until it turns blue. So this is based on the main indicator. So it actually tells you blue, okay to trade. Yellow, it's okay. But for tonight's example, you'll we'll take, take a look at uh, on the 26th. Okay, we we'll submit. For NASDAQ, you can see there we are. We only have six. And again, what are the sectors we are looking for just now? Technology, right? What else? Anything else? Technology. You'll remember now. 
renewable energy, right? So we use that one. So we have to see water world resource, uh, water world resources. This is energy. This is coal, oil, and gas, but it is still trending up. Then we can look at silver sun software. Okay, I mean just giving an example. So we look at silver sun and we can look at the chart wise. We can switch on to the real time chart here. Right, this is how we look for those stocks. Okay, this is Silver Sun, a big move in here. Uh, you can see a lot of uptrust. Today, market is down 10%, not surprised. Okay, here is also we can look at the Dow Jones, okay, which I look at YM1. Right, that's what you see here. Whew, the market just opened and sell all the way down. Right, it took us almost one month to go up, and uh, you can see here once uh, the Dow Jones hits here. It's just going to shoot straight down in here. So just take note where we are uh, for, for today. Okay. So looks like to, so what we want to do is look for a good position going back to here again. Uh, the others, nothing exciting. So if nothing to buy, we don't buy. Okay. So that's one of the good things if we look for very, very low risk straight. All right. Uh, we have therapeutic. Okay. Let's look at another one. Uh, change the date to the 27. Don't, don't, don't forget, we have four, four exchange inside here, all right? So if you subscribe to our system, you have KLSC, SGX, Hong Kong, NYC, and, and US. So this one right now, we just go by healthcare, personal, uh, communications. Okay, we can look at communications here, right? Uh, real estate, life science in here, advertising, biopharma. So we can look at communication that been so light, L-I-T-E. And uh, those of you who want to know, you can also look down here. What are things they do? Optical, laser, uh, excess carrier, serving in sheets processing. Okay. And uh, we can look at the charts right now. So this is how we look for stocks. All right. You can see uh, even after we have the, uh, the, uh, the no supply in here, market continue to fall. We want the market to go stay above here then we do a trade and also we want to trade when there is a blue trend zone so definitely that's a no-no there okay what else real estate not interested internet no we want to choose those with the purple okay purple one much better colombia sportswear okay that's a clothes that if you go overseas you will say c-o-m-l-e okay automation that's right uh, today is down everything is down on uh, today okay today is a short day Temporary shorting. So yeah, this is an interesting one. You have no supply, all right? There was likely to be a continuation, but the market is down. So tonight may not be a good day to because this is a big sell-off. We wait for it to hold its base first. Then we'll go back to going in, okay? So we have to wait for the spring. So I think tonight, that's all I want to talk about the... Uh, the, the market that we have, we're going to have a big seller, but we'll probably see in the uh, later session around 4 o'clock whether the market will turn back or not, okay? So volume spread analysis is the way to go forward. And like it or not, if you look back at COVID, which is many of you uh, are having a lot of time, you know, uh, the working hours was lost globally. Yeah? This second quarter, almost 400 million full-time job was lost, 14% of the world. So the question is, what are you doing? So if you have nothing much to do and you really want to learn what we teach you, because tonight is just more of showing you the perspective that's a lot, but our coaches are here to you know to guide you through. And uh, if you are in the growth state, feel like learning a lot, because I said opportunities there is for you to take, all right? And then our coaches in here, we do a lot of Zoom program, definitely uh, three more days to go, our VSA one day training this coming Saturday. We still have some seats left. If you are interested, wanted to come, just type 1D, okay? 1D and just register and uh, just make the uh, uh, booking and, I'll, and we'll see you on Saturday, right? And now uh, that's for our one day foundation course, okay? We will touch on smart money, work on the screener that we show you, then you have for 24 months, uh, sorry, 12 months that you have, and uh, the guidance that we'll give you, that will entrust that when the opening comes next week, after you see the big wash, the big move, uh -huh, that's where we want to be ready for that one. So if you are interested, uh, just type 1D or masterclass that we are doing. We are doing our intake now. So registration is open for the December intake where we talk about the US market. The one day is a foundation. This one is the market class, okay? 
So in summary, I want to say that, so use Smart Roby. Now, many of you have Smart Roby, use the, the screener in here as a setup. Look for uh, the good winning rates. Uh, get a low risk, good winning rates. If you don't have hours, use some of the free stuffs out there. You know, just need to know what they are and what they cannot do, right? Uh, or look for the use our NS screener if you're ready to learn more and upgrade. Okay, point number three, right, is the all right and prepare a sector leader watch list it's also important that so let's say you look at technology what are the sector leader in there so in my master class i normally give them a list of this sector leader watch list and i get them to prepare remember in the those coming class right early on in october i gave you that list use that list so usually you have that list. if you're not you just need to do a bit more work on your site right that will give you and finally you now get a good system okay that means a winning system good winning rates teach you how to avoid the market, right? When market boom, you want to be in. Of those of you who want us and been following us, if you're comfortable with the way we teach you, right, do join us, our one day and master class. All right, so that's all I have for, for tonight. Thank you for coming. It's a rather uh, a simple market approach to, to overall, just to give you where the market and sort of to prep you up for next week. Don't get panicked. This sell-off is normal one, as I said, mentioned before. Okay, so I'll take some more questions in here. Uh, my fellow colleague, Zach, uh, will be there to uh, help you with some information. If you want to know more about our one-day courses, uh, just text us and uh, we will come back to you uh, on those. Any question that you have? Okay, make sure you guys uh, do the preparation right and you'll be fine all right continue to follow us right all right okay thank you very much now don't forget our number is just below on the screen there scoring 010266 and uh, if you really want to know more about our program download smart robby join us and we have tons and tons of good material on our youtube and also our Telegram chat room. Thank you and good night. Bye-bye.